Well, whichever way you look at the UK's climate, there's little doubt that uh, there's little doubt that uh, we're going to move straight to Cathy to continue that story. Thanks, John. And there's little doubt that something serious is going on with the UK's climate. We're running out of weather superlatives, the coldest, the wettest, and early winters followed by late springs. And the changes in our weather are also causing unprecedented changes to our landscape and wildlife. Now, in a new series, Channel 4 News will assess the alarming rate of change to Britain's countryside. Will our green and pleasant land ever be the same again? We begin with the threat to our trees. Here's our science editor, Tom Clark, on why they've never had a tougher time. Spring has now most definitely arrived, and here in southwest London, that means these oak trees are now teeming with the tiny caterpillars of the oak processionary moth, one of our newest and most troublesome invaders. Not only are they munching their way through our most enduring tree, the British oak, the caterpillars also have tiny hairs on them that can trigger extreme allergic reactions in people. Tonight, DEFRA is announcing the largest ever scheme to eradicate the oak processionary moth. The pilot project will give one and a half million pounds to the Forestry Commission to spray an organic insecticide on these oak trees and hopefully put a ring of steel around the processionary moth stronghold here in southwest London, south London, and at another site in Berkshire. But as I've been finding out, oak processionary moth and the newly arrived ash dieback are just two of an army of invading pests and diseases of trees that threaten not just our woodland ecology, but the entire landscape of Britain. The rolling wooded hills of Britain, they've fueled, fed and sheltered us for generations and remain the green lungs of the country. Last year, we learned one of our most iconic trees could be wiped out by a new disease. But ash dieback is not the only invader we face. Our entire treescape is under attack like never before, as an unprecedented number of new pests and diseases arrive in Britain. And it's climate change that's creating the conditions for them to take hold. In this film, we've gained exclusive access to the first major project to combat ash dieback. We speak to the scientists who want your help to find out just how sick the rest of our woodlands are. We'll also visit what could be the forests of the future, planted to withstand our fast-changing climate. We're getting two seasons rather than four. Our trees are having a tough time. In fact, they've never had it tougher. Winter is finally over, and here at Pound Farm in Suffolk, the battle lines are being drawn in the fight against ash dieback. In neat rows, six feet apart, they're digging in an army of saplings, 25,000 strong. Together, the Woodland Trust, DEFRA and the Forestry Commission are embarking on the largest ever field trial to find natural resistance to ash dieback in our native trees. The more diversity you've got in this plot, the more likely it is you'll find a, a resistant one again. Exactly. So we want to get the, a good mix of the different genetic types which are naturally here in the UK, but lay them out in a very strict pattern so we can monitor them closely and see which ones might hold the key to resistance for ash for the future. We know that the disease is already present here at Pound Farm. We've been monitoring it for a little while now, and really this is the best place to put these trees right in the eye of the storm in terms of putting them where the spores are going to be present. Over the coming months, they'll be intensively monitoring these saplings. Evidence from mainland Europe is that one or two percent of them may be resistant to ash dieback. A few of these saplings may hold the key to the future survival of all Britain's ash. As they race to find resistance to ash dieback in this wood, just down the road, an even more iconic tree, our native oak, is under threat from an entirely different disease. The fact is, our trees are facing an unprecedented onslaught. When Dutch elm disease wiped out 25 million trees in the 1970s, it was one of just a handful of imported diseases. A few more arrived before the new millennium, but in the last 10 years, the floodgates opened to 16 more. The picture of Britain could soon be a very different one, as our third most common tree is destroyed by ash dieback. Horse chestnuts are struggling with the leaf miner, now spread across half the UK. A newly arrived acute oak decline and the oak processionary moth are now threatening our most widespread and enduring tree. 
The science suggests climate change is creating the conditions for more of these invaders to take hold. Higher temperatures, droughts, floods, wet summers, all of those can stress trees, making them more susceptible to pests and diseases. Trees are like people. If we stay healthy and we're fit and we have all the, the nutrients that we want, then we can overcome flu and cold. And temperate trees, you know, these that are growing around us, need those four seasons. They, you know, they need to shut down, they need to know what's happening and they're confused. Who would have thought the last summer and, the, and this winter that we've just had would have been like it is? We're probably not going to have a spring this year. We're going to go straight into summer and then we may lose an autumn and go straight into winter. So we're, we're getting two seasons rather than four. Here at Kew, scientists are researching six new invaders threatening oak, ash and chestnut trees. They're looking for chemical clues that might explain why they're vulnerable. Take our much-loved conker trees, currently being chewed to pieces by a leaf mining moth. Well, so here's an example of some um, leaves that we've got. You can see here that there is the, the brown tinges to the leaf. Got you. And okay. in the centre area here, that's where the leaf miner has done some of the damage. And then we can look at other plants, other species, where you don't have any mines at all. So this is okay. Asculus, it's the same genus, but you don't have any damage. Which would suggest there's something in the leaf itself that yes. the moth doesn't like. The, the larvae don't seem to like this at all. If they can identify the chemicals responsible for these sorts of differences in chestnut, oak and ash trees, they hope to breed more resistant trees or come up with new treatments. But we still face a major problem. No one really knows how healthy Britain's trees are. And that's where you come in. We want people to, to uh, re report on all of the trees that uh, they find in their local area, their garden, in the street and so on. Tomorrow, the Outdoor Laboratories Project, run by the Natural History Museum and Imperial College London, are launching the first ever citizen-led survey of our nation's tree health. Their survey pack guides volunteers through a tree health check. We can't cover the whole country ourselves. There are many places that are not accessible to us, for example, people's back gardens. Um, so the information the public provide will be really important in helping us understand the distribution of these uh, pests and diseases, but also the general condition of our trees. With pests, diseases and climate putting the squeeze on our trees, the experts are trying to plant resilience into the forests of the future. These are giant redwoods growing not in California, but in Gloucestershire. For the last 20 years, successive organisations have talked about using native trees of local origin on local spots. That assumes a stable climate. That assumption no longer applies. So we're now saying local is not always best. And that's why this year the Forestry Commission have changed their policy on what trees are best for Britain. This is the first mass planting of coast redwoods in the Forest of Dean. Their preference for hot summers and lots of rain could make them an ideal commercial species in future. And even England's heart of oak is getting a transfusion of French blood. These saplings are being grown from acorns brought from the Loire Valley. So if our trees and their pests and diseases are on the move because of a changing climate and the demands of people, isn't it time to accept that what we perceive as traditional British woodland is actually a thing of the past? Disease hitting our woodlands will happen again and happen again. It is part of those natural processes. But because the woods are small and fragmented, they're more vulnerable. Because they are quite narrow in terms of the nature of them and the number of species, it makes them vulnerable. So what we need to think about is having more woodlands, more diverse native species, and having those woods better connected. That means they have more natural resilience to disease and disaster and are more likely to survive in the future. The current onslaught has the potential to irreversibly alter Britain's forests but it's also raised new awareness about the importance of our trees and their vulnerabilities. So some good may come of the current crisis, but we're not out of the woods yet. Tom Clark, Al Fresco, and we'll bring you more from our series Green and Present, Pleasant Land, Pleasant and Present, tomorrow. After the break, the questions continue in the Cleveland kidnap case as police reveal the three women were tethered with ropes and chains inside the house where they were held for a decade.